Good morning, Ms. Copeland. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine, sir. Good, nice seeing you again. It's nice seeing you too, sir. Ms. Copeland, would you give us your full name and your Department of Corrections ID? Yes, sir. My name is Karen Monique Copeland. My DOC number is 308478. Thank you, Ms. Copeland. Uh, I think all three of these persons were present at your party hearing. Ms. Bonnie Jackson, Mr. Pete Freeman, and I'm Alvin Roche. And you yes. pretty much process. You've been through the party process. Uh, but I want to explain just briefly I'm a recent information into the record. We're going to conduct a pro interview. There's some people that want to speak on your behalf. And we have a person who would like to speak in opposition, the assistant uh, DA from uh, Jefferson Parish, Mr. Randall Myers. And of course, before that, we're going to give Gordon Thomas a chance to uh, make a statement if she wishes. At the very end, before we vote, we're going to give you a chance to make a brief statement why you should be released, OK? Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Copeland, you're currently 51 years old, your first felony offender. This is your only arrest on your criminal record. You have uh, earned up to 755 days of good time. Your offense was second degree murder, and uh, you originally sentenced uh, in Jefferson Parish, and you sentenced, your life sentence was commuted to 99 years with immediate parole eligibility. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, your parole date was August 1st. 2021, your guest at good time date, April 24th, 2039, and your full time date is October 18th, 2089. Is all this information correct? Yes, sir. So tell me about your activities since the pardon hearing. Have you completed any additional programs? Yes, sir, I, I have. Just call him out, Mr. Copeland. Oh, I've I've completed um, the job life skills program. I have a certificate for that from March the twenty first of this year. Uh, the financial peace class certificate uh, was granted to me on April twenty eighth, two thousand twenty three. Um, the construction site safety orientation based on NCCER, April 7, 2022. Another NCCER program, all levels of core were completed. I have a certificate for that for May the, the 2nd, 2022. Um, lead out Louisiana. Season two, I have a certificate for completing and recording an original song on December 7, 2022. It has the signature of the Secretary of the Department of Corrections on it. Um, I also have a certificate for 10 general attendance hours of the End of Life Nursing Education Consortium by the Louisiana Mississippi Hospice and Palliative Care Organization and my certificate has December 30th, 2022 on it. I'm actually a healthcare orderly, and that was part of my training as a healthcare orderly. And I am currently in the victim impact program. I have not completed the course, but I'm, I'm currently attending that. And I'm also currently attending uh, a safe surf certification class. I'm, I haven't received the certification yet, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm almost there. But I do have a, a, a serve safe certification that has expired that I that I had um, gotten previously, but 
so that oh. is what I have completed since the clemency hearing. So what are you trying to tell me, Ms. Copeland? You've been busy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I have. And let me interrupt the interview. I failed to mention that we have Mr. Carrie Myers from the Louisiana Parole Project. We have Ms. Colleen Brown, the art, that would like to make a statement. And Aaron Pure, Pure uh, your cousin, that would like to make a statement. And your uncle and godfather, Maurice Copeland, is here in support and will not make a statement. Okay? Yes, sir. When's the last disciplinary write up you had, Ms. Copeland? Uh, 2009. Okay. In a little while. <laughs> 2009. So we're talking almost 14 years. On Thomas, do you have any comments, remarks? No, I mean, I was just going to mention it has been, you know, quite a while since she had her last write up. Um, I know she's mentioned all the things she's done since the last time um, you all met at the last hearing. So she has been busy. And we really appreciate the things that she's doing as uh, the healthcare orderly, because that is really meaningful work for the ladies that we have in our infirmary area. So she does a great job with that. Um, and you've also mentioned Carrie Myers will speak on the parole project, but that is her transition plan as of right now. Okay. Thank you, Ward. Thank you. Ms. Cole, it's important that you complete the victim impact. It's yes, very, sir. it's a new program. And from what I can understand, it's an excellent program. Yes, and sir. You said you're almost complete. Completed with your certification mm -hmm. and service. So you yes, should sir. before. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Karen Myers, Louisiana Parole Project. Yes. Um, good morning. Still morning. Uh, I'm here to, uh, to tell you that the Parole Project is in full support of, of Ms. Copeland. Um, should she be granted her release, Parole Project will provide long-term uh, transitional support for her. Uh, we're not gonna have an expiration date on that. We're gonna assist her uh, not only through her transitional programming, but beyond that with employment opportunities, uh, we'll assist her uh, in, in the long-term with finding long-term housing. Uh, stable long-term housing she'll 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 stay in our orbit uh you know she'll stay in our in our orbit um as as a as a client as someone who uh, we know has 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 needs um because be, because we have to provide this long-term housing uh but she's she's well prepared all the, the programs all the things that she's taken uh she's employable uh, she's healthy. She's she's obviously, as you can see, uh, ready to ready to do this, and we are here to support that uh, throughout. Um, she'll have our case manager, uh, Ms. Jeremy, uh, who will who will make sure that that she has you know that type of personal mentorship uh, who will guide her through all this, uh, and, per, and she obviously has parole project support through it all. Thank you, Ms. Martin. Ms. Colleen Brown. Ms. Brown, would, your mic is muted. Would you unmute your mic? There we go. Good morning. I'm Colleen. Good morning. Sorry? You're ready for your statement. Yes, yes. I am, I am Karen's aunt. Um, I have been with her since day one with her being in prison. I do come visit her on a regular basis. We, uh, we talk and everything like that. And um, we've always had a good relationship anyway. I've known Karen since day one. She actually lived next door to me when she was born. So um, I, I want to mention that it's really important that, um, you know, the parole board considers her for uh, release. Um, I've been there as far as supporting her. I will continue to support her in any way, shape, or form, because I, I think Karen has definitely um, talked about the situation, and she does have remorse for what she's done. 
And I think with that remorse, she's also found a uh, good avenue to help other people, even while in, pres in prison herself, by helping them with different kinds of classes as far as computers and helping them to be a better citizen. And I think there's a lot that Karen can give out in the outside world. So looking forward to hopefully getting her released and back and getting her to support whatever way she needs it from me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Mr. Aaron Curie. Yes, sir. Uh, you had two or three minutes. You'd like to make a statement. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll go quickly. Uh, my name is uh, Aaron Curry. I'm her first cousin, uh, same age as Karen. Uh, we spent a lot of time together growing up in the early 80s. Uh, Karen lived about 20 miles away with her dad, and my mom would go and get her and have her come over and uh, be around her. And she did this because Karen grew up with the, in a household full of um, And my mom tried to uh, produce her, you know, some of the feminine aspects of life. Um, I know uh, the summer of 87, I lived together with my aunt Colleen that just spoke. Um, after that, I came to California to live with my dad out of choice. Uh, Karen, I know she stayed with my aunt Colleen for a little while. And after that, um, I believe she moved to Louisiana to stay with her grandfather who passed. Um, I, I, I know there was a situation where she was uh, awarded some money on his death, upon his death. He was, uh, she was the only grandchild. Um, Throughout the years, I talked to Karen on the phone. She never really talked to me about the crime. Um, we, we, we talked about it extensively last year. She was up for clemency. And I told her, I said, you know, if I'm going to speak on your behalf, I need to um, question you sort of like a lawyer. And some of the factors, you know, that she uh, experienced in her early childhood, I think they greatly uh, affected, um, you know, this particular situation. Um, you know, namely, uh, she told me that she moved in with her grandfather who passed and was awarded money. And she was granted that money when she turned 18. Um, the crime took place, I guess, when she was uh, about 18 and a half. Um, she told me that she had actually um, experienced some, some homosexual behaviors. And basically, she found out that that's what she, the direction she wanted to go. Um, and she told me that, uh, you know, she was introduced to this young. Mr. Kira, would you wrap it up, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just, I guess in, in all, um, I'm a family practice physician assistant. And basically I, I know that her level of maturity at the time of her crime, um, it, you know, the brain was not fully developed. She's, um, 18 and I know it doesn't fully develop until around 26, 27, um, and I, I know she's remorseful. I just feel that some of the factors, they weren't really uh, expressed. And um, I just want to say uh, thank you for letting me speak. And um, I'm in favor of her being released. I don't, I don't feel that she's a threat. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Curie. Uh, Mr. Randall Myers, Assistant uh, District Attorney in Jefferson Parish. Good morning, Randall Myers, Assistant DA Jefferson. We're opposed at this time. Uh, Ms. Copeland shot her victim seven times. She's had limited programs. She, she's got a bunch of certificates on some things, uh, you know, vocational wise, but limited programs on her rehabilitation. One thing that concerns me is March 16, 22, she had the medical director stated that she refused all medical call outs, evaluations, gynecological exams in 21 and 22. The psychiatric asses assessment is limited in the record. And although her total risk assessment score is low, she received high marks for antisocial thinking and peers and employment. She received moderate marks for substance abuse, mental health, depression, and total needs. Um, for those reasons, we think additional programming is needed before she would be uh, a, a good risk to be released on parole. We're denied. I mean, we're opposed at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Ms. Copeland? Yes, sir. Would you like to make a brief statement on why you should be released? Yes, sir. Uh, I know that I have changed and grown, and I, I know that I would not present a danger 
to anyone if released on parole. I'm no longer the, the lost and desperate 18 year old I was when I took the life of Ms. Glapian. There's not a day that goes by in which I do not regret my actions on the day I took Ms. Glapian's life. That's my statement. Thank you, Ms. Copeland. Uh, as a panel ready to vote, I was assigned your case, Ms. Copeland, based upon you being vetted by this body through the court process when this body made a recommendation to the governor's office. I'm quite sure the governor's office re you and he saw fit to grant you the commutation of nine, nine years with the new book based upon a good transitional plan with the Louisiana Pro Project, based on family support, based on positive remarks from Warden Thomas, my vote is to grant your request for early release. After release, you'll have a curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. I want you to do some community service. It was your parole officer. It was your uh, pastor. Now, before release, I want you to complete the big impact program. I think that's most important to understand all the implications about what you did to the victim and the family of the victim. Good luck. Mrs. Jackson. Hi. Um, Ms. Copeland, uh, my vote was the same. It's made my condition on completion of the victim impact program and grant to the Louisiana Parole Project. Within those conditions. This, um, it's a big uh, I can turn and I vote for it. Ms. Copeland, you have received three votes. Grant your early release. Condition on you completing the victim impact program, then when you are released, you are released to the Louisiana Parole Project. 